You know, we were talking yesterday because I got the Asmodee sell sheets, okay? <coughs> and Asmodee does not, people think Asmodee owns everything, and they mm -hmm. own a lot of big name games. They don't come out with as many games per month as you might think. Okay. I don't know why I'm, mm -hmm. I'm saying that because we have Asmodee news. Yeah. Oh. There's a new branch of Asmodee called Office Dog, which I don't think is a particularly good board game company name. Are we sure it that's looks, what it is? It is looks it a like board a, game company? It just looks more like a tech company. No, it is a board game company, yeah. Well, it's an office dog. It's a board game design that, group. That logo looks like they offer websites. Yeah, it looks like a tech group, yeah. You know, yeah, office dog know. is where I get my domain. Oh. That's what it looks it like, does, right? Yeah, a little bit. All right, this was formed in May last year to do ludo, ludo logical matchmaking between the many IPs and assets held by the parent company, the Embracer Group, and freelance designers just dying to take advantage of them. Okay. Okay, and I okay. actually I actually saw them just recently, it was yesterday, I think, or two days ago, where the, the person in charge of this, Brian um, Brian, I forgot his last name. He was he put out a post like, Hey, we're looking for this, 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 and this type of game. You wanna do it? Let okay. us know. Okay. Okay. So they'll they'll have the intellectual property and the need for something. Right. And they reach out for people to fill those spots to design designers. those things. Okay. Yeah, Got so we, we have some games. The first three titles are in development. <clears throat> Word Traveler. This is from the crypto designer, Thomas DL. I'm going to abbreviate his last name because okay. there's no way I can pronounce that. All right. Mm -hmm. um, you're moving through the world cities by using a limited number of words to see the sites. And then you have to figure out where on earth the active player is going. Carmen Where in the world is Word Traveler? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Then Rivers of Gold. This is from Keith Piggott, designer of Drawn to Adventure. Oh, I like Drawn to Adventure. Yeah, okay. That's a Euro title that's using the Legend of the Five Rings IP. Oh. And wow. you're building stuff next to a river. And then Crafting from Cosmos. This is from designers David Gordon and Tam. Tam, why do I know that name? T A M, capital O? I don't know. Um, it's a universe building title. You're using the forces of the universe, time, ionization, light, and gravity to build nebula and foster life with city building, engine building, and worker placement. All these games are coming out in 2024. Okay. So, okay. Wow. All right. None of these... We we're talking about IPs. The only IP mentioned is Legend of the Five Rings, which is an internal IP. Yeah, I wonder... Well, I think that's what they're saying. I think that's what this is. <coughs> Asmodee now has access to a bunch of intellectual properties right. oh, I that see, might I see. be dormant. And they are going, let's use it. Right. We want to make a game that is this type with this IP. Yeah. Who wants to fill this uh, this gap? So that's, yeah, it's a mediator, sort of a, yeah, That's that seems to be its role. Yeah, it's off so. dog. Okay. All right. I have an open mind towards this. We'll just wait sure. and see. I don't know if I would like working for a company called Office Dog. <laughs> no? <laughs> hey, you're the new Office Dog. Yeah. Welcome. That's right. Yeah, I don't know. Here's your water dish. You're an office <laughs> puppy first, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Diamond Dogs. All right. WizKids is partnering with the Korean board games to bring the Prince of Florence. We have this copy of the game, actually, in the yeah. library. The the, uh, the Korean, Korean board games. Board game. It looks yeah. like they're just basically putting a WizKids logo on. Wise move, because Korean board games makes good quality games. They really do, and they've added some nice little things to this. There are a couple of uh, changes to the game, but uh, it looks really nice and I almost picked up a copy at Gen Con but it was too big of a box to bring back so we got one for the you library. Essen? Essen, thank you. I was um, like Gen Con. Yeah, no, no, there. they were at Essen but yeah I was I was very intrigued by this. Now I think mm -hmm. The Prince of Florence is a dated game and isn't as good today as it used to be. Okay. There are many people who think otherwise and really like this game. It was once number two on Board Game Geek. Wow. It's a classic. It's a classic. Also, it looks way better than it used to look. It was all beige. Yeah, yeah. All right. This next game isn't beige at all. It's about a party oh. we're having our dice tower. Blob party. Blob what? party. Want to be part of the blob party? I want to be known as an office dog again. <laughs> yeah, all right. Jeez. We're going to just go down. It's horrible, yeah. I'm trying to make you appreciate office, your office dog. Office blob. <laughs> office blob. This is a co-op game. For four to eight players, looks like it's sponsored by Crayola. Yeah, frankly, that that really looks like a Crayola a tune, or cram something. box almost. Yeah, yeah. Um, you are you start with a small blob of dough and a googly eye. Okay. Oh, this is actual thing. 
Zeb definitely designed design this game. <laughs> yeah. As you match with more and more other players, you merge blobs, growing larger and adding more googly eyes. So let's say the group starts with the category music and the word is lightning. Okay. So you, what would you write on a card if the two words, if the category was music and the word is lightning? Greased? Greased. They also put Bohemian Rhapsody. Very, very frightening. I was going to say Queen. Okay. Yeah. So. David Bowie. What David Bowie do with lightning? Light. He had a lightning bolt on his face. And then one yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Anyway, you reveal your answers, uh -huh. and if you wrote the same thing, you're now a blob and working together for the rest of the game. Oh, okay. Okay. And eventually, hopefully, everyone gives the same answer, becoming a mega blob and winning the game. Mega blob. So I like that concept. But it feels like a one-time concept. Like, oh, we yeah. had fun playing that, now let's put it away and never play it again. I wonder if once you blob up, <laughs> you can't split again. Yeah, you I can't. Won. When you, it, I think it's co-op. <clears throat> yeah, so when you're all together, you're trying to do it as fast as you can. Okay. Okay, okay. <clears throat> I mean, it sounds fun to mess with, with Play-Doh. It sounds like the Play-Doh on googly eyes, though, is a complete Gimmick. superfluous like, thing yeah, that doesn't even need to be in the game. Yeah. Also from WizKids, and they're really like going all over the place at how their games look. So this this look completely different than Blob Party. Yeah, it does. Americana. That might be the newest big theme. Yeah. You know, we talk about nature. Right. But I think Americana is that thing. Go across national parks. Yeah. Trekking parks. across America. Yeah, yeah that's true. Um, this is from Dan Manfred Manfredni. Why do I know that, that name? That name sounds familiar, yeah. Well, if I click this link. Yeah. Oops, I need to... Erase. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I need to erase my... Uh, Search history? Uh, He's a board game designer. He did a game called Far Space Foundry. Okay, I've played that. I did not like that, but you did. He also did Venture so Forth. Okay. Venture Forth was okay. He did Monkey Lab. Monkey Lab was not good. Okay, and he did Island Siege, which I, I played a lot of his games, actually. All right. So, oh, we'll see. Um... You're traveling through the 1930s American wilderness. There's finding wildlife, going to locations. And you decide how to interact with stuff to get memories for your journal. Okay. Yeah. It seems like a large game on that table. It, it seems does. like there's a decent amount of moving parts. I like that theme a lot. So. I like that look that a lot. That cover is really, oh. really striking, yeah. Yeah. It's a good font, the whole nine, yeah. And again, this is a weird thing where that logo is the one thing that's a little jarring. But it's not too bad. The WizKids logo? Yeah. I like that they're color coding them to their covers, That's at true. least. That is true. I think that looks good. <laughs> no, I did. Someone has Dan Man. Did I mean Damien? No. His name is Dan. His last name is Manfred Fredini. Sorry, Man Manfredini. Okay. Sorry, not Dan Man. That's, that's a different name. All right. Dan, man. Giving you whiplash as we take a look at games. Now we're jumping to Block Block Burrito. Woo! Expansion. Um, the expansion for Throw Throw Burrito. So Throw Throw Burrito is basically a game in which you are playing cards, and if you play the same card as someone else or something like that, you grab a burrito on the table and throw it at the other person. Yeah, or you right. a a foam, a You'll take three steps, burrito. turn around, and throw a burrito. It's not right. foam. It's Oh, it is foam. I think there's a stuffed version, too, but you're right. It is a foamy. The ones I've seen are sort of like that dense foam. Yeah, yeah, okay. My kids now. enjoyed it, and they definitely were like, can we have a tortilla <laughs> expansion? A tortilla blocker. I can block it. Mm-hmm. They are going to want to play this. <laughs> block, block burrito, huh? Jeez. Okay. I do like inflatable tortilla shields. Oh, it's inflatable. Oh, <laughs> I'm in. All right. Okay. This next get game, I think we might have some difference of opinions on here. Line dice. Okay. Because here's my thoughts on this. This is another... This is a game that came out in December 2022. I guess we must have missed it. But anyway... This looks like it is um, a roll and move, or a roll, roll and a roll and move and write. Okay. A roll and write. I don't know. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. If you're going to make one of these roll and move games, I'd rather your cover look like this than the three dice coming at them. Well, sure, of course. This is a solid looking. I mean, yeah, if I this really... was only four letters, I would guess it, it was from Next Move Games. Yeah, it's classy looking. It's got That's that I like this cover. Look. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. if you're going to do dice, right, make your cover <laughs> unique and interesting, not. Four dice thrown at the thrown at you, yeah. <laughs> it looks terrible, but this looks nice. Yeah, I don't know anything about the game. It looks like it's um, maybe came from Asia originally. Uh, I thought you weren't because you groaned when you saw this. No, 
Maybe you were just groaning in old age. I may have just been groaning from old age. Yes. All right, That's fair just enough. A, Goodness. Always a possibility. All right, continuing with our whiplash, now we're at Mountain 53. And we're like going from yeah. one extreme to another here. <laughs> Whoa! Um, this is an old <laughs> game that's getting re-implemented. Yeah, the original game was called Ab in die Ton. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Ab in die Tone. I have a I feeling feel like you'd know that. I'd say you'd know Carlo it if you saw A. The Rossi, <laughs> the design of it. I think if you saw the cover, Look up that original cover it. for me, Tom. You're Googling stuff. Go ahead and Google that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Apparently, this guy's name is also the name of a wine. Yeah, Carlo Rossi. Oh, we did Divinity Derby, which mm -hmm. I played. Dungeon Time. Arkham Horror, The Final Arrow. The Terrible Arrow. Arkham. Mm -hmm. So what's the name of this game called again? Off Under Tobin or something. I don't remember. What, you don't remember? Ob. Ob? But that is Just Ob. Just that into the thing, Tom. You're right. Come on, man. I forgot the name of it already. <laughs> Ob in die. <laughs> this is fascinating. There. You guys never thought you'd get to watch me Google. There's no, no way you played that game. Never mind. Wow, that game looks terrible. I click the other one, the other cover. There's the same cover. Oh boy. No, okay, no, I don't yeah, know this. No never idea. mind. Looks like you're throwing f trash into a trash can, basically. It looks like a dexterity game. Yeah, you're going to reveal some cards, and then you place them in a piece of garbage. Into the garbage can. Oh, so it's a plastic, it's a dexterity game. Yeah. You're playing cards, putting stuff in the garbage can, and I'm okay. assuming you don't want the garbage can to overflow. Okay. It's like real life, where everyone's like <laughs> trying to put a piece of the garbage in, because if in. you can't put it in, then you have to empty the garbage, and right. no one wants to do that. That's Got correct. it. That's correct. Except for the person who's next to the, the, the desk is next to the garbage then can. Ready Mountain 53. That's an interesting title. It is. All right, we're sinking. A pirate's dilemma here is our next game. This is from Ludimus Games. Let me guess, it's a social deduction game. It's definitely, I think it's supposed to be like a prisoner's dilemma type okay. thing. Yeah. You are trying to f repair your damage ship by fighting off four different threats. Oh, so it's pandemic. <laughs> but you want to fend off the enemy, but you also want to be a player with the fewest cards in your hand. So it looks like it is a semi-co-op mm, sounding that way. And <laughs> Yeah, right. Anyway, hmm. this is coming out, I guess, later this year. I like the cover. I like that artwork. I don't hopefully, know how I feel about it, actually. Hopefully there's a lot of this artwork. Also, what's in those baskets over there by the tentacle? I'm confused. Ooh. Gumballs. Got it. I think it's jewels, but it definitely looks like gumballs. It looks it like those little uh, balls that you that become come dehydrated and you rehydrate. Orbeez. Orbeez? Orbeez, is that what that is? That's what that looks like. Gosh, I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't know. Never. Orbeez are like tiny little beads, uh -huh. and if you put water in, they expand. They look like a little, they look like um, the bubbles in, Boba? in uh, Boba, yeah. bubble tea, yeah. Yeah, but what are they for? Well, the only way an adult would use them is... is to make a TikTok. Well, there's that, too. Gosh, I'm so... <laughs> no, no, but... There's foot massage machines that use them. Oh. And you film your and your feet are like in these. Oh my gosh. All right. This I've is done a whole that. New world. It doesn't I've feel, never even. But kids like them because, oh, look. Yeah. And they're also using some air fresheners. Okay. That's gosh. Like, you can use them in like airsoft type guns to like shoot. The whole, this is a whole you, universe you, your, your I was completely eyes unaware of. Also, aged out of it, Mike. The, okay. the most popular YouTuber on the internet, Mr. Beast. Refer to him. This was his first big video that he ah. did. He filled an entire pool with them. Okay. Wow. All right. And then he drowned. <laughs> now he gives out free cars, but I haven't That's seen right. him show up in our neighborhood yet. Mm -hmm. I keep looking. I'm like, where's the free car? Yeah, right. Wait, All right. Nervos. This is a new game coming out. It's a real-time puzzle analysis game. Ooh. I'm in. <laughs> it's from the, the designer of a bunch of those trick-taking games. Uh, Taiki really? Shizawa. Yeah. That cover, that description, mm -hmm. those colors, ah, uh, no. We're is that like a Greek font sinking. almost? We're sinking. Nervos, like, yeah. It yeah, looks it looks like a little it. bit like it, right? And there's also like tetromino pieces up there. So what's going to happen is we flip a puzzle card over. Everyone yeah. is mentally analyzing the card to see which shape is not needed to complete the puzzle. Oh. oh. Then you'll grab that piece off the table. Ooh. I just got a stomach Then ache. you have a few seconds to show that you're correct by constructing the puzzle with the remaining pieces. Oh my goodness. I would play this and I'd be like, who wants to play this? And the day start would be like super quiet and people are like, I'm working. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. 
All right. Let's make you happier by taking a look at a new game from Devere, Blind Business. That's what I'm talking about. Beat that donkey. Which definitely has <laughs> a Cuphead it vibe to it. Does, oh, yeah. it does. It's cute. The devil's peeking. <laughs> he is peeking. And the avocado. <laughs> that avocado is demonic. Look at that. <laughs> wow. Anyway, there's a 10-foot donkey-shaped pinata. It's the oh, mascot and symbol of the town. <clears throat> the mayor has announced the contest to take down Ricky. So, uh, I guess where you're oh, killing Ricky, the mascot? Ricky is the donkey? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. This is one of their small box games, I think. It yeah, looks, you're offering like someone it. a card, and you, they can refuse it. it oh, it's, it's a little cockroach poker type thing. Oh, my gosh. Ricky the donkey, I am all over this. <laughs> all right. In uh, Rio Grande expansion news, Race mm. for the Galaxy has a new expansion called Xeno Invasion. I love Race for the Galaxy, and if you showed me this cover, I would have said, this already came out. No, this one did already come out, but there's, oh, a, there's oh, an did. expansion to this. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Thank yeah. Thank you. The new one is called Xeno Counter-Strike. I was going to make a joke that they're, it's yeah. like the same. Right. This is the same. Okay, this is good. the same, yes. So this is in a, a sequel to Xeno Invasion, and this concludes the third arc. So, so confusing. It is confusing. So, But the way it works is Real Grande made Race for the Galaxy. Mm -hmm. Then they made three expansions. That's the first arc. And that's the first arc. Mm -hmm. They then made another expansion. They were like, don't you dare mix that with the first three expansions. And I a, did. A and Tom Lemon showed up at my door and slapped me. Wow. I remember that. The second arc is a single expansion? I think so. And so this new one... This is the thing. The first arc, three expansions. Second arc, a single box expansion. Third arc... Two, two expansions. expansions. <laughs> now, I will wow. say this. Those first three expansions were, <clears throat> they got progressively worse, unfortunately, as we went through. But you can take good cards out of them, play with them. The second expansion is, like, forgotten. It's yeah. one of the worst expansions ever. Uh, something is that in the, the future, walking around expansion? Yes. It's, it's like, in the future we'll be doing our top ten expansions. <laughs> that didn't make my list. That being said, Xeno Invasion and kind of brought things around again. Mm -hmm. I thought this was a good little expansion. That I didn't think it needed another half to it, but I don't know. I love Race for the Galaxy, but I do. I will say most of my Race for the Galaxy is playing with the base game, yeah. maybe the first expansion. Uh, yeah. And it's and it's been out for when I think it came out in 2006 or something. I would love for them to just reissue. And I'm still enjoying it. I know. I just wanted to reissue Race for the Galaxy at this point. With a new, I don't know, Race of the Galaxy 2.0. Where's that at? I am worried about this, though, because it says it can be played by itself with mm -hmm. just the base game. Though it's fifth player, an optional Counter-Strike game, and he's the first one. The Counter-Strike game begins as a Xeno invasion, which, once they're repulsed, turns the tables to Galactic Empires and strike back at the Xeno home systems across the Starry Rift Frontier and Border Zone. First of all, are you kidding me? <laughs> what does that even mean? That means nothing. Race for the Galaxy is not, it's a cool space game. But the theme is... It's just cards. It's yeah. cards. I think it's very thematic. You guys are both incredibly wrong. You got the yellow planets. Yeah. You got the other purpley planets, okay? Mm -hmm. You got the one with the little chromosome planets. Yep. In this version, tableau size no longer ends the game. The Counter-Strike game continues until there's an economic victory or you beat the Xenos. This is the Epic Conquest version of Race for the Galaxy. Final tableau size of 25 cards are not uncommon. I'm out. I really think I'm out there, too. Because tableau size is 12. Yeah, that's crazy. I'm do I want to double the length of Race for the Galaxy? I looking at all these cards i got to be dealing with. Nah. I am going to try it. Because Race for the Galaxy is one of my favorite games. All but right. I do not have high hopes for this. Also, I don't think... I like Tom Lemon. He's one of the best designers I've ever played games from. One of the I, best was ever slapped you. <laughs> he did not slap me. Uh -huh. uh, but I think he's one of the worst expansion designers for his own games. Okay. Almost always when he makes a game and then he designs an expansion for his game, the race for the galaxies, the role for the galaxies. I'll come to his defense a little bit and say that the Res Arcana expansions I knew you were going to bring up the Res Arcana are very stuff. good. I'm just saying the Res Arcana expansions are very good. I'm not disagreeing. About the Race for the Galaxy stuff, especially that first cycle. The third in that first cycle was folly. Folly! You don't put rules in there that take up multiple pages for something that might happen one time out of ten games. Folly! <laughs> All right. 
Our next game looks like it's a sequel to Merv. It it's is, in that right? same line, I think. It's uh, yeah. Wow, it really <coughs> is too close. Well, I think it's the same designer. It's definitely also Osprey. Sancore, yeah, yeah. the pride of Mansa Musa. Is that how you say it? Sancore? I would assume Sancore. I would think so, yeah, yeah. Sancore. Um, wow, that's pretty. But wow, it's... playing time, though, is 150 to 180 minutes. They're saying this might be like the heaviest game that Ever. Osprey has put out. Oh! Really? I thought Even I saw, more I thought so I than that, that five... Oh, I don't know. The Crescent Moon? Yeah, I don't know. Read Crescent I Moon's I pretty heavy. I read that in there, but maybe not. I might just be making it up. I love it when you make stuff up, Mike. I do, too. It doesn't say, but... Okay. Yeah, I might have read that on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> Get off Twitter, Well, that is Mike. true. Yes. All right. The next game is from Simon Classic Art. Um, showing the girl with the earring, which apparently that picture is so good they made a whole movie about mm -hmm. it, which I fell asleep during, which actually doesn't narrow that down the movie, but mm -hmm. wow. I couldn't believe they made a movie of this picture. Of this painting. Of this yeah. painting, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, what's her name? Black Widow. Scarlett Johansson? Yeah, she was the girl with the earring. Oh, really? So this is based on Scarlett Johansson? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I might be interested now. Uh -huh. No, this is a Reiner Canizia game. <clears throat> It's a re-implementation of members only in Glenn's Gallery. Glenn's Gallery? Yeah, that old, old wow. game. Wow. Okay, I'm looking that one Go up. Ahead, Google it. Google is a more. I think they've made a couple little changes to it, but... I don't... When's the last... I played... Oh, I never even played Glenn's Gallery. That's from Mayfair Games. Mm -hmm. Are you sure I didn't play it? I'm going to see if I did a review on it. I did do a review on it. I never rated it. Mm. It was 13 years ago, Tom. I'm sure I gave it a 10. <laughs> All right, it's anyway. 16,527. And then it was re implemented by Classic Art. Oh, no. Okay. Wow, it's you said There you go. <laughs> I Actually, will say this I'm, su I, I'm surprised, but I'm also glad that Simon is still doing some of these yeah, things. Yeah, I do too. For I a while, too. they had one year there where they were like, oh, we're not just a miniature company. Right. <laughs> and they just put out like Wind 12 right. games. Mm -hmm. They did. I that really were all that. these little things, weird little card games, strange. I mean, they, they came out with so many in one year. Remember Looters? Yeah, I mean, they had so much stuff and then backed off, it seemed. Yeah, yeah. So I'm glad that they still will do this yeah. a, a little bit. So this is this is very nice. This is really close to being out. I know this because it's we got one. Oh, we got one. Well, we almost got one. It's at the old house. Oh, jeez. So okay, we will hopefully get it. Okay. Mm. <laughs> um, unless my neighbors are like, oh, let's play oh, this game. Oh, classic art. Can meet you. All right in. The biggest leaked news I've ever seen in a long time. Yeah, the right. Lost Ruins of Arnak has another expansion. I kept getting emails that said embargo, and I kept seeing it mentioned all over the internet. Yeah. Also, is anyone surprised by this? Not even a little bit. The missing expedition here. Although they're behind Dune. And <laughs> they are now, Dune and yeah. second expansion came out. Anyway, this one, the first expansion, Expedition Leaders, very popular. Yep. In fact, many people won't play the base game without it. Okay. Um, this one here... You can play it with the other expansion. You're gonna. There's two new leaders, mm -hmm. new paths, and two new research tracks, new artifacts, items, and assistants. It sounds like it's just more stuff. I think it's more stuff. Yeah, that's good. More yeah. stuff is good. Cool. Looks good. People that like it are going to be all over it. Gen Con, folks. Gen Con. Mm -hmm. All right. Century. Spice Road has a big box coming. Now, that's not a surprise because every game in existence has yes. a big box. Yeah, yeah. That being said, I did fit everything for Century in one box. It was a tight fit. When you say Century, everything for Century, you mean all three games? All three games. In one box of Century? It was a tight squeeze, wow. but I got it. Done. Wow, I don't know, Tom. That doesn't sound right. You need the big box. Mm. Well, the big box is going to add some more stuff because why would they not? Sure, of course. Um, What's in it? It's going to include all three of the games. Okay. okay, so far so good. Every bonus card printed to date. Hello. Mm -hmm. Quicksilver promos. Um, mm -hmm. An exclusive location board for Century New World, only previously available on the Board Game Geek web store. Okay. Bam. Okay. New dual layer caravan boards. That I like. Done. Dual Mike is all caravan over this. boards. Yeah, but are they as good as my three dimensional? Wagons I have. Those are really cool. Those are nice. Actually, I have those monuments from all over the world. Remember, like the yeah, pyramids? Yeah, that's right. Mm, I don't know, Tom. I've already been here, Plan B. Uh, but also, 
a new mini expansion called the Golden Deals. Oh boy. That comes with clear card sleeves that add more options. Oh it's boy. actually taking a little bit, I saw all these, it's stealing a little bit of John DeClaire's. Yeah, the, what? The card, card I know, it's weird. Really? That's a thing now? I might need the Century Big you Box. You need this. No, here's the good news, and this I, I give them credit for. That Golden Deals mini expansion you can buy separately. You oh, man. This. You don't need this. I, I don't know that. that I would want to get this, actually. I like the Century games. I like mm -hmm. that they can be mixed together. I don't know if I want a big box. Of course, I'm kind of fading on big boxes in general. I'd like to see how big this big box is. If That's it true. still That's fits fair. in a cow. Tell you that picture you know. makes it look like the Carcassonne big box size. Yeah. It really does. I hope not. I hope it's not that enormous. Right. I will say I don't have any of the Century games, so this is pretty good if if you're yeah. like me and don't have. Well, I any wonder of them. does this come with all the games? Well, so what do you mean? Three, you just right? said that it better. Come with all of them. It does. Well, I'm I never I'm double checking because some big boxes come with right. space to put the three right, games. Right, right. You know what oh, I mean? Oh no! Then, Would yeah. you like me to pull out that Agricola expand yeah, fifteenth yeah, yeah, expansion yeah, yeah. box? Yeah, piece of yeah. garbage. Mm. All right, Century Big Box. It is very cool. All right, final piece of news: Steam Forge is bringing Sea of Thieves to the tabletop. Steam Forge, which they gr basically, if you have a big giant IP. Steam Forge is waiting around the corner like a... A video uh, game IP, that yes, is. Yeah. I cannot believe this has not been already made into a board game. Yeah, this, this is very big. And it's, been, years. it's been big for a while, and yes. it's actually kept... It's, um, I still play relevant. this with my son. Yeah. Like, regularly. We still play Sea of Thieves. We'll really? Do, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so here, I'm going to be a little dumb here. I don't okay. know what it is. It's a it's a sandboxy type of a game. It's a you, you play as pirates, and you can upgrade ships, and you just go on quests, and try to... It's available for the Steam Deck. I think mm, you would like Xbox it, It's Xbox exclusive, I want to say. Oh, I think it is Xbox exclusive, yeah. This um, is owned, uh, but this is... Rare makes this, and right. Rare is now owned by Xbox, so. I will never play it then. Yeah, it's too bad. I played a little bit, I played maybe half an hour, Mike. Mm. It's hard to play alone, that's the it thing, is. right? Yes. Like, yeah. So it's kind of messing with it, but on my own, I downloaded it and yeah. messed with it, and it's very cool. Like, at the, when you begin, they put you on the ship, mm -hmm. you're going through the waves, and it was like so immersive. In the oh, distance, yeah. there's a storm, yep. there's like a creature over there, and I was like, I feel small. Yeah. It was great. It's very Very cool. immersive. Yeah, very cool looking. But clearly the way you're doing it is the way to yeah, do it. Yeah, it's, it's good to play Yeah, with, with others. I want to jump in there, Mike. It says it's not Xbox exclusive. Tell them it's family only. Huh? I thought it was Xbox game, exclusive. Tell them it's family only. Oh, family only. Yeah. So uh, it's all about family. Can I jump in there, Mike? Yeah. Delicio, Fast and Furious. That's right. It's all about family. Okay, you know what? Never mind. We'll, we'll you adopt play? you. We'll adopt you. You and I will do it. PC. It's on PC as well. Oh. So then maybe it is on the Steam Deck. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Ooh. I think you'd dig it. All right. Well, that's the news, folks.